Rated M for Mature. So I'm here with an extremely special guest, uh, someone who I'm a huge fan of, Terry McGovern, who plays Larry in the Walking Dead game. And uh, Terry, I'm so excited to have you here today. Nice to meet you, you son of a bitch. How are you? It's, I'm Good great. You. Wow. Every off. time I do that voice, I think of George C. Scott. Do you know who he was? I know the name. Terrific actor. <laughs> Terrific actor. Uh, look him up in Doctor Strange. But he talk like that. That's kind of, I guess, where I got it for Larry. Is, wow. Not a nice man. Just jumping right off the uh, right out of the gate there with that's Larry. Way, that's, wow. that's the way it's done. <laughs> so before we go into Larry, before we talk about uh, you know your character in Walking Dead, I want to discuss some of the other stuff you've done. You've done uh, Launchpad McQuack mm -hmm. from Ducktales and and uh, Darkwing Duck. That well, I've been al alive a long time, AJ. <laughs> so I've ha I, it's it's good that I've done something. <laughs> um, I'm like a kid in his in his game room when I go home at night because I go into my studio and I got microphones and dials and, <laughs> and I've been, you know, that's been my life, my, my entire life is, is audio, you know, and I love designing audio. And uh, I, so when I got a chance to get into cartoons, into animation, I jumped at it and hoped I had the talent and got lucky, got cast at DIC, uh, D-I-C, which was a, a strange French company. I know Deke. Deke. I remember the logo that yeah. Deke. The doo -doo -doo -doo. Deke. It had that weird, uh, yeah, for every cartoon I'd watch and as a kid. Uh, you were the voice of the Stormtrooper in the original Star Wars. It happened like this, sweetheart. It's a great show business story. All right, do we have time? Uh, do you want to go to a break? All the time you need. Uh, 1975, I'm living in San Anselmo, not far from where I, I live now, uh, because I hadn't gone to L.A. yet. And I came in. And uh, it was going to be for George's new movie. So we, ah, not eat George. He's making another little movie. <laughs> yeah, what a great kid. He never forgets us. So we went in. It was on Polk Street. And the only thing that, you know, you, you, actors are always saying, well, tell me about the part. You know, how, how old am I supposed to be? What am I wearing? Right. You want to know everything, right? Yeah. And so uh, she said, I don't know. You're some kind of robot. That's vague. That's I said a <laughs> robot. So again, being much younger and having much more chutzpah than I, I should have. I went in and I dressed all in black like in this mime outfit <laughs> and I was ready to get out of the box. And for giggles, because again, I love sound, I had this little tape recorder for the time. It was <laughs> very small. And I had recorded bleeps on it. I haven't told this story, I don't think, ever. <laughs> and I go into the audition, Polk Street, go up the steps, see all the actors, you know, hey, how you doing, Charlie? So I stuck this thing in my pants and walked in when it was time for me to go in and it was, it went off. And I did this little robot thing. And Lucas is sitting at the desk and he goes like this. What is that? And now I have to stop at the break character and explain to him and reach into my pants. He goes, oh no, we don't, no, we don't need that. <laughs> So I thought, well, that's another one. So we jumped in. Uh, Johnny Weissmuller's a motorcycle had a sidecar, and the three of us went to the Buena Vista, and I don't remember the rest. So what kind of audition? Was that for a robot or storm? We, what the hey, hell were you George, doing? <laughs> George is a genius. He's a great man, but he doesn't speak. He brought me into uh, his house one night. I only lived five minutes away. Me, Morgan Upton, Scott Beach, uh, Jerry Walters, I think that was the, the group of us, and said, we've made a new movie and we need some post-production voices. Okay, we're sitting in his big palatial screening room, and we had a stack of paper, and there were lines all over them. And he says, basically, you're like stormtroopers. You're like police. And he was, because Johnny had played that, uh, I don't know if you remember THX 1138, but he had a guy who was kind of a prototypical stormtrooper in there. Right, right. With the mask and the helmet. So we were, we were ribbing him about it. What are you going to show us any? What is this? And he says, well, I have a little film I could show you. Okay, George. And he shows on the screen the explosion of the Death Star. <laughs> and the lights come up. And we looked at each other and went, that's it? And he said, that's all I can show you right just now. Just do a voiceover that. So just shut just up and do this. <laughs> and everybody did the same exact lines. We just kept passing the script around. Then kept, there were random lines. And for some reason or other, they took my track 
to be with Alec Guinness in the scene at the uh, cantina. And I saw it two years later at a theater in Los Angeles. I, 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 I almost lost my mind. Because <laughs> the guys I'm with have no, I said, I think I have a little voice thing in this. And we were all through it, all four of us, you know, all That's, the good guys. Right. Who can ever forget? Blast them! Remember that? Yeah. yeah. That's you? Yeah. <laughs> I may need a new pair of pants after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Back to the future. Back to the future. So you were involved. I was in the original, uh, I was in the film. Right. And, and, and the film was shot, uh, I guess, 84. And I got a part to play one of the parents. I can't remember whose father I was, but a number of us 35, 40 year old guys and women were hired to be the parents in the film. And then Zemeckis, who would redo things like that, he fired right. Eric Stoltz after 30 days of principal photography and brought Michael in. Right. I'm very thankful for that, by the well, way. Of course. <laughs> but you're talented. You could have done Eric. So uh, I, I, I did my two or three days on this show. and. Uh, my agent goes, you're on the cutting room floor. Zemeckis went a whole different way. He had the actors themselves play the adults in prosthetics. But you'll, you know, you still get paid. And they put me in the 25th anniversary, my little scene with Michael and Crispin Glover. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen this. We got to see this. Cut to that. All right. So one more thing. One more fan thing I got to ask you. Yeah. Launchpad from DuckTales, Darkwing Duck. Huge fan. That was something I grew up with. And like, Launchpad was you know, essentially the badass of those cartoons. It he, destroyed uh, a lot of your generation. He, he those, did. Those. <laughs> Launchpad single-handedly. Yeah. No, I mean, that was a very wholesome show. That was pure Disney. I had one line to read, and I had to drive halfway across the world to read this one line, and I was so frustrated, and I looked, and I saw a big stack of scripts from Disney, and it was like, unclean, stay away. If you're not on this list, you can't right, right. look at these scripts. So I, I had this old VH tele, a VHF telephone. I went out to my car, and I called my uh, my agent and I said, listen to me, I said, if you don't let, because I saw the launch pad description and I knew I could nail it. Right. Uh, and I said, if you don't get me in for this, I'll, I'll, I'll hold my breath or, uh, you know, <laughs> made some idle threat and he said, all right, relax. And uh, he called Bob Lloyd who owned Voicecaster and said, let this guy get in. He'll get in and get out and won't give you any trouble. So they let me in and do it and I got it. And this is the insanity of doing voice work because they get a voice print in their head you know, the creator, and it's, if they're good, they do, and they know exactly what it is they want, and they have it down to a gradation. So right. when you make the final cut, when you do get cast, you've gone through a very bizarre screening process in this guy's head, or in a committee's head, because they all kind of know what they want. And, I, and tell, here he goes, cheap plug, uh, brown nose. Uh, Telltale's got that. Telltale's got that with the, the professionalism of the writers, the designers. Uh, f as an actor, I really appreciate the, the written material. Larry's a great character. I mean, he's not... Larry's very misunderstood. He, yeah. He's well-loved. Everyone loves Larry. Well, he's writing a book. Larry's writing a book? <laughs> a memoir from the uh, beyond. My life from is Larry. From my, life is Larry. <laughs> my life is Larry. Only 14% of your people tried to kill me, AJ. You know the stats? 14%. Only four. Yeah, I was going to say, I, uh, let's see, boy. So why the hell did you kill me? Why did you let me die? I didn't kill you. I personally You know didn't who I'm talking you. to. <laughs> Mr. Head Game Designer, Mr. Lead. I can't come back. I'm dead. But it, it was kind of interesting. I didn't, my character didn't die of, uh, the bite. I died you, of, you died of salt. Uh, I died of a salt. A brick of salt. A brick of salt. How did you No, I died. I had a heart attack. Was well, it? Well, that's one of the I don't know. That was my thing. When I was playing through it, I was like, I could bring him back. I think I could revive him. I think he's still alive. So I was not willing to just, you know, throw a brick at your head. But, uh, You I have a know. place in the will, AJ. Thank you for at least trying. <laughs> at least Got try. it. So how did you approach playing Larry? What was your mindset oh, behind well, Larry? But he, it was based just on what, what, you know, what the creators said in the script. What, you know, they give us the, he's middle-aged, he's insane, he's whatever. He's cranky. They didn't mention how big my nose was going to be. <laughs> that is Would some, that have changed? What a hooter. You see that nose on Larry? That's some kind of hooter. The big jaw. But the, yeah, he was just a nasty guy. And also, actors love to swear, because we, we don't really get a chance in the, you know, television, although that's changing with cable. Right. But to be able to say, you asshole, all you sons of bitches, it was just great. First of all, it sounded like my family, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And it was, I don't know, there's something endearing about it. You know, as I said, only 14% of the, of the people tried to kill him. Yeah, which is, it's a weird thing when, so you, you know, when he has his heart attack and he's laying on the ground, you're like, I don't really want to do it. Like, I wanted him to die the entire time, and then yeah. we got to that moment, yeah. I was like, I think I could save him. Well, I hope <laughs> this has taught you young people something about compassion. The thing I love about this game is it shows humans how really vile and antisocial we can be. Yeah. You oh. know, that we exclude each other and we only look out for ourselves and for our own. And Larry, d underneath it all, cared, uh, cared about his daughter. Yeah. That's the interesting what thing was her about name? Larry. Uh, what was her name? Hey, what, what is my kid's name? Lily, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't give a shit about what happens to you. But if anything happens to my daughter or that little girl you've got with you, <laughs> you watch your ass. So he had some soul. He had some compa compassion. But he was, he was not a pleasant man. No, not a pleasant man. Please well, pick up my book. That's all right. Robert this Kirkman is, a, is a, an alias. Oh, this you. isn't my book. What is this, Walking Dead? I did play the game. You know you were in a game, right? No, but, but I, I, <laughs> and I never played a game. And I got to sit with all the voice actors at Dennis's house for the party. Right. And we all got to kind of kill our characters, which was, f I mean, it was fabulous. And we all had the controller, and it turned out that only two of all the voice actors there had ever played a game before. They were as lost as I was. Wow, really? But it, now I know why you guys are hooked on it. It's fun. Yeah, really especially is. killing Larry. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. There's only 14%. We'll find him. Yeah, we'll find the 14%. <laughs> You're a very talented man. So are you. You're much more talented. Thank no. you so much for, uh, for talking to me today. We're all on our own today. curve. Wherever we are, that's where we are. That's right. That's uh... Keep going, kiddo. You too.